All right, Joe Stedman, today I'm going to talk about the rally phase. Um, it won't be a very complicated lesson, and a lot of these things you could probably uh, pick up quickly. But I'm still going to go over it. It's the first step of any ASL uh, turn, and I'll just go through it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom on the map and walk through the rally phase. Remember, on the rally phase, both players, the phasing player and the enemy player, uh, both have an opportunity to do things. Usually, um, the phasing player will do all his rallies first, and then the opponent will do his. So let's go through that now. All right, let's first talk about rallies. If it's your turn, you're the phasing player, the first thing that you normally do, now there's something called the advanced sequence of play, but no one really uses it, so it's usually pretty informal, but the first thing that you always should do is the phasing player gets one self-rally. So let's say that this guy is broken, this guy is, these guys are both broken. There's no leader. And let's say this one's got a happy hat on. I'm DM'd. Now you get one self rally. And you have to decide who it's going to be before you roll any dice, before you continue. And this guy is a seven morale. They're both sevens, but this guy's DM, so he's going to get plus four. So he has a seven. He gets minus one for being without a leader, so a self rally. So now he's going to need a six. And he gets plus one for being in a woods, or a building or a woods. So he's back up to a seven. So he would need a seven to rally. This guy also needs a seven, same as this other guy, plus one, minus one for the leader and for the woods. But he's also DM, so seven. Now he needs to roll six, five, four, three. So you can choose this one and roll a seven, or choose this one and you have to get a three. Probably go with the seven. Unless this was a more vital part of your defenses. Let's say that he had a heavy machine gun with them, and um, you just had to take that risk. And there's times in ASL when you're going to choose a self-rally for a guy that is an unlikely role, but you have to for your defense or for your attack. So that's the first step. You declare your self-rally. Now, so all you do, let's say that I chose this guy. All I would do is I'd roll two dice, five, six, seven. I rolled it. He's up. He's back in the fight. That's pretty simple. Now, now to regular rallies. Regular rallies are pretty simple. If you have a leader with a guy, all right, so this guy needed a seven before because he was a seven to start. He has plus one for being in a building or woods, so he needs an eight now. And he does not get the minus one for not being in a build, I mean, without a leader because he's got a leader. And so this leader is a minus one leader, neg one leader, so it makes it even easier. So he's a seven gets one for the building, which is eight, another one for the negative one leader, so he's a nine. So all he needs is a nine to rally. Oh, he, he easily rallied. Now, the leader can multiple, if there's multiple broken people in his stack, he can rally each of those. Now the back of the leader, you'll see that it's boxed. His broken side morale is boxed, which means that he can self-rally by himself. Like earlier I said the guy could try to self-rally. Well, he does not have to be your one self-rally. Anyone who's broken like this with the box can self-rally. He needs an 8, but he's in the woods. I mean, a wood building, so he needs a 9. But he's by himself, so he always gets the negative 1, so he's at 8. All right, so he needs an 8 to rally. So let's say he's like this. It's like the stack looks like this. Well... He needs an 8 to rally. And you also had a broken guy here. I chose to do my self rally attempt on this guy. It passed. Woo, there's my one self rally attempt. Now I can do a self rally on this guy. So it's a free one because he's boxed. And I get it. He flips. Now, because he's not broken anymore, he can try to rally the guy underneath him. If I would have tried that, and let's say I rolled a 10 and I did not pass, then the guy underneath him would not get a chance to try to rally because. I already did my one self rally on the guy next door. So you only get one self rally attempt unless it's boxed. So there's that. Now each unit each unit may only attempt to do one type of thing per turn. Let's say it looks like this. There's a broken guy with a machine gun who's DM'd who's DM'd and a regular broken guy no, not a regular, just a regular guy and the leader. Now, I get to do 
one action per unit. And let's say I use my self rally attempt on this guy. Now why would I do that? Because if he fails and doesn't get it, the leader, instead of trying to rally this guy that's a DM, he needs a really low roll, he can strip the machine gun and give it from the broken guy to the good ordered guy. Maybe it's a hinge pin of your defense and you have to have this machine gun back in this heavy machine gun back in the game this turn. Alright. So there you go. That's something you can do. Leaders can take SWs, support weapons, and take them and give them to someone else in the same hex. That's an option. Another thing that you can do, they can deploy. Deployment is something that's not in a starter kit. Let's say that you had this 838 with this N negative one leader here. And no one's, you can choose as a, as a rally option, deployment. Now we've not done deployment before, it's not in a starter kit. Deployment is when you break a full squad down into half squads. Germans can do it, Americans do it, a lot of the armies can do it. Russians cannot do it at all. You have to look at your national distinctions, what they can do chart. There's a chart that shows you who can do it. But Germans can do it, so they can break this guy down into the two half squads. And you would do this because, let's say you need scouts, you want to spread out your defense, you want to have some cannon fodder for your attack, whatever. All you have to do to be successful is to roll that morale value of the unit you want to deploy and you can use your modifiers as well. So he needed to roll an 8 or an I, a 9 because of the leader. So he got it, he rolled a 7. So just take this guy off the map and replace him with two F squads. That's deployment. And you'll see that a lot in the initial turns of a large scenario because he wants to have lots of scouts that can go out in front because it's better to send out a 338 into the street than to send out an 838. Because if the 338 breaks, you've got another 338 that can go a different way. You can send him, you know, this other direction. So deployment, that's something you can do. Another thing that you can do during the rally phase is fix broken machine guns. If you have a good ordered unit with a broken machine gun, you can try to fix it. Now, on a previous turn, you had broken the machine gun by rolling a 12. This machine gun broke, it's upside down, it's jammed basically. And now on the rear on the rear side, you'll see this got a repair number of three, an X number of six. So you can choose to try to fix. You roll one die. If you roll a six, it's destroyed. Let's say the, the barrel melted or whatever. If you roll a one, two, or three for this particular heavy machine gun, it's fixed. It's back in. He fix, clears the jam. Now that's a really easy one. One, two, or three. Like your light machine guns are almost always a one or a six. One's fixed. Six is not. Anything else you roll, nothing happens. No effect. It just stays broken. And a lot of times by the end of a battle, you'll see broken machine guns that have been abandoned all over the place. So that's something else that you can do. Now remember, you can only do one action per rally phase. So let's say that this 838 was broken with this leader. I can't, for instance, say, all right, I'm going to rally him, and you get a successful rally, and now, oh, I want to deploy him now. You can't do two things. You can only do one. Just like if this guy is broken with a broken machine gun, I can't try to fix this machine gun. I can't say, okay, I'm going to rally him. Oh, now that he's rallied, I want to try to roll to fix the machine gun. Nope, one action per unit. All right. So that's that's basically rally phase. Once, you can, excuse me, I have a cold, but after... Uh, you've done all your actions, your opponent can do all the actions. But the opponent does not get the one self-rally. Only the phasing player gets that. So he does all his actions. Once both of you have completed your rally, you move on to prep fire. One thing I forgot to mention is anytime you ra try to rally someone who's DM'd, successful or not, the DM comes off. And that includes anyone who's DM'd. At the end of the rally phase, all DM's are removed. So even if they didn't attempt to rally, or if there's no leader with them, they still lose their DM status. So don't forget to remove those happy hats. Now, as I'm going through these lessons and talking about phases, little things will pop into my mind that I should probably remember to tell you about or um, little rules that will come into play that aren't necessarily part of a rally or part of a phase. Or if, you, if you're watching this and you have a question, feel free to post it. I'll try to bring it up in the next lesson or answer you right there on the Internet. So that's the rally phase. Um, pretty simple. I may have, I think I've covered everything. If you see something I missed or you have another question, just ask. And excuse the cold. Um, just that time of year, I guess. So uh, next time I should be talking about the prep fire phase.